The RTX 4060 is official. NVIDIA has confirmed it. It's not a rumor. There's no speculation. We know price. We know release date. And we even know a little bit about the performance. And we're going to talk all about that in this video. Now, I would love to get my hands on a 4060 so that I can do my own testing and provide that information to you. But unfortunately, I don't qualify for any type of review samples at this time. And so for that reason, I'll have to buy it with my own money. So please be patient with me while we have a brief word from today's sponsor. Two quick facts about me before we proceed. Number one, I'm a PC channel and I've never covered a VPN, but today's video sponsor, Atlas VPN, wants to give you an incredible deal. And let me tell you why you need a VPN. A VPN is a virtual private network. And basically when you're online, you are constantly being monitored and tracked and people want to get your information. They want to sell your information for marketing purposes. You can protect yourself even even from your ISP, internet service provider. That is one of the only few ways left in the world to actually have a little bit of privacy while you're online. Fact number two is my wife and I went to Japan a few years ago and it was awesome. I can't wait to go back. But while I was there one night, we were trying to Netflix and chill. And unfortunately, one of our favorite shows was not available in the Japan region. However, thanks to services like Atlas VPN, I was able to change my location, make Netflix think I was back home in America and boom, I had access to all of my favorite shows. Everything I just said comes with a 30 day money back guarantee and it's available on unlimited devices. You can check the link in the description below to take advantage of this incredible deal. You can get three years for $1.83 per month. And if you sign up now using my link in the description below, you will get three free months on me. Everybody needs a VPN, so why not Atlas VPN? Okay, so the RTX 4060, let's talk about it. It will release on June the 29th for $299. Now, a few things you need to know about this. Number one, that means the day before on June the 28th, all the major tech reviewers will be doing their reviews of the 4060 Founders Edition or whatever cards that NVIDIA has authorized. Usually it is only the Founders Edition the day before release. Now the day on release, Release, then you'll start to see more reviews about all the other AIB model cards and things of that nature. Now, the price is very interesting here because the price is $299. That's actually a W for gamers, and here's the reason why. Now, the 3060, which this card will be replacing, is actually growing in popularity. We know that based on the Steam charts. I also know that personally from all the comments and views I got on my 3060 review video. Now, the 3060 launched at $329, so that means the 4060 is actually coming in $30 cheaper than the 3060. But then on top of that, we can make the assumption that the 4060 should not only be a little bit more powerful, but also more efficient. And now NVIDIA has provided some data on their website to show the 4060 versus the 3060. And yes, the 4060 is more powerful and more efficient than the 3060. And we can see that based on the information that NVIDIA is providing on their website. Now, obviously we have to take all of this with a grain of salt. Obviously NVIDIA is not going to show you anything that paints the 4060 in a bad light. But assuming this is true, and it should be true because honestly, it's kind of what we expect at this point, then that's actually a W for gamers. You're getting a more efficient card that is slightly more powerful for $30 less when compared to the MSRP of its predecessor. That's actually good. That's actually what we have wanted up to this point with the 40 series cards. We can also see that Nvidia is claiming the 4060 will be 20% faster than the 3060 and 60% faster than the 2060 and eight times faster than the 1060. Now, for those of you who have a 3060, you're probably not going to be interested in upgrading to a 4060 simply because when you buy a 60 series card, you're planning to hang on to it for a while, right? So I think the 4060 will probably be best for gamers that are on any other card older than a 3060. So obviously you're going to see a much bigger uplift if you're coming from an older card like the 1060 or the 2060. Nvidia even made sure to note this on their website for gamers coming from a GeForce RTX 2060, performance is multiplied by an average of 2.3 times across a suite of 18 games. And for GeForce GTX 10 
within 60 users. In addition to higher frame rates, they also get ray tracing and DLSS acceleration for the first time. Now, as with all things with marketing, you have to take this stuff with a pinch of salt. You have to read between the lines. Technically, yes, most of this stuff is actually what it is. If you're coming from a 1060, yes, you will finally have access to DLSS. Yes, you will have access to ray tracing. And of course, the 4060 will outperform the 1060. But the number is like 2.3 times faster on average when compared to the 2060. You got to take that with a pinch of salt. And here's why. Now, if you notice, there are two different colors here. And obviously, the green line is significantly further ahead than the gray line. Now, what is the difference? Well, the difference is with frame generation versus without frame generation. Now, I want to give credit where credit is due. I do appreciate NVIDIA actually making that distinction for us. However, what they have not done is give us straight up raw rasterization. So technically, this still could include normal DLSS non-frame generation DLSS. And honestly, I think for some of the titles and the other chart, it actually does include that. And here's the other chart NVIDIA provided. And if we read the fine print, we can see it's running with a 12900K at 1080p max settings. DLSS and ray tracing are enabled for the games that support it, except a Plague Tale Requiem high preset and Resident Evil remake ray tracing preset. There is still a little bit more work that can be done with these charts because again, NVIDIA has muddy the waters just a little bit here by trying to say things like where applicable or for games that use frame generation or games that use DLSS. Well, that means I have to go through and I have to figure out, okay, which one of these games support ray tracing? Which one of these games support DLSS? Because if there's a game on here that doesn't support ray tracing or DLSS, that means it is actually native rendering. Now that means I have to look at the chart, go through the games and figure out, you told me which one of these games support AI frame generation and which ones don't, but you haven't told me which one of these games support ray tracing and which one of these games support normal DLSS. Because if a game supports those things, then you're telling me you did enable that, meaning that it's not native rendering, it's not native rasterization. But if a game doesn't support those things, then now I know I'm looking at native rasterization. And so I just wish NVIDIA would make that a little bit more clear and stop making us do all the legwork. But still the fact remains, we need to wait for the official reviews. We need to see what hardware and box is gonna say. Gamers Nexus, J, well, maybe not J after the 4060 Ti debacle, but all the other people, right? Now I'm just joking with J. But look, at the end of the day, we need to wait for the official reviews. But taking it at face value, if everything holds up, you're looking at a card that is coming in at $30 less than its predecessor with more energy efficiency. And if you're coming from the 10 series or the 20 series, you're definitely going to see a much nicer increase in performance. If you're coming from the 30 series and maybe not so much, you know, on average, it's only looking at about a 20% performance increase, which still is something. I mean, it's not amazing, but it's something. And now listen, I've done a lot of Nvidia bashing on this channel over my time here. I've called out certain things that I don't like and things that I don't support, but here's what I can say about what I'm looking at right here. Number one, unfortunately, as we all may or may not like it, frame generation, DLSS, all the AI crap, all that stuff is here this day. And quite frankly, with the way that games have been lately, it looks like we're gonna need those tools. Now, I'm still a big fan of normal raw rasterization, native rendering. That is what I want to see all day long. I'm okay with looking at numbers for DLSS and frame generation and ray tracing and all that stuff, but that should be the icing on the cake. It should not be the cake. But unfortunately, those are the main things that Nvidia wants to primarily focus on. That is all the stuff we see in the marketing and in the pricing of the cards and now in the charts. With all that being said though, those things are annoying, but unfortunately they are here to stay. But in all honesty, and maybe I'm out of touch here, let me know in the comment section below. I don't really know how beneficial tools like frame generation will be on a 60 series card at 1080p. I don't really know how many people really use ray tracing even at 1080p. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. If you scroll down on the website, you'll see that Nvidia is claiming there are 400 RTX games and applications, 79% of 40 series gamers turn DLSS on and 83% of 40 series gamers turn ray tracing on. I don't really know how they're calculating all of this. Are they saying like, oh, you 
turned it on one time when you first bought the card. Yeah, you might have turned it off, but you turned it on. So we're going to count that or if they're actually tracking people who are actively using it on a regular basis. I don't know. I really don't. But those are the numbers they're sharing with us. Take it for what it is. Now, I have one little problem, just one little problem with what I'm seeing here. And I bet you know what it is. You want to take a guess? VRAM the eight gigabytes of VRAM on the card. Obviously, I've, I've been very vocal here on my channel about that. I've done a couple of videos on it. I am not a fan of cards having eight gigabytes of VRAM in 2023. I'm just not. I think the standard should be at least 10 gigabytes, but preferably 12 gigabytes of VRAM, even on the lower end cards. However, I understand that a 4070 Ti is rocking 12 gigabytes of VRAM and it's like $800. Clearly, you're not going to get a $300 card with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. It's just not gonna work that way, unfortunately. So it is eight gigabytes of VRAM. Now I am a lot more forgiving because it is only $299. Because of the price point, I can definitely overlook some things. I can overlook the fact that it's only eight gigabytes of VRAM because it is officially the cheapest 40 series card on the market. And for a lot of people, that's gonna be their go-to option. If you've been on the fence about getting a 30 series card, getting a 3060 or, or something like that, well, this is probably going to push you over the edge because it is a 40 series card. You get the AV1 encoder. You still get the in-bank encoder. You're going to have more efficiency, more performance per watt when compared to the 3060. And the card is launching $30 cheaper than the predecessor. I mean, so all these things are really good. The only real downside here is the eight gigabytes of VRAM. For the people who are used to buying a 60 series card or maybe even a 70 series card, this card may be right up your alley. And so I want to give credit where credit is due. I'm happy to see Nvidia finally release a 40 series card that succeeds the previous generation and gives you more performance per watt at a cheaper price. It's only $30 cheaper, but hey, I'm going to I'm going to call that a W and I'm going to say, "Hey, this is looking good. We do need to wait for the official reviews." But right now, in my opinion, everything's looking pretty good. I want to give a massive shout out to all my Patreon members. Thank you for your continued support. I really do appreciate it. If you want to get some behind the scenes access and some extra benefits, check out Patreon, which will be linked in the pinned comment below. Let me know what you think about the 4060. Are you excited for it? Do you think it's going to be a good card or are you not impressed so far? I'm looking forward to talking to you down below. And if you don't mind, please hit that like button because it goes a long way in helping me out. And if you're new, get subscribed. And until next time, E-Rock out.